Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at some of the simple organic naming. So this will cover some of the Chem 1 and Chem 2 material in terms of the, the simple ones up here. So starting with the alkane and then some basic functional groups. Introducing a couple more for the, the Chem 2 and then I'll do a separate video for the, the Chem 4 one where you need to know quite a bit of the organic naming. I'm going to try and steer clear of sort of giving you the um, complicated breakdown in terms of all the prefixes, suffixes, things like that and try and get you in the hang of more just reading it as you would read a, a sentence in a book because when you do that you're not really consciously thinking noun, verb, things like that anymore. It's more just you've got the hang of actually reading it. So the organic name in chemistry is a skill to pick up. So I'll start with some of the, the very simple ones first. Um, I will do one or two more complex of the alkanes just to introduce the di, tries and the, the substitutes. So I'm going to assume that you've learned your actual carbon counting in terms of meth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec. The chem one only requires you to count up to six, um, but obviously when you go on to further you do need to be able to count up the tens, usually the maximum you'll see. You might see other questions that have got more, but they'll typically tell you what it is after that. So starting here, I'm going to be using the skeletal form as well, by the way. It just saves me time actually drawing it out. If you're not used to the skeletal, then practice drawing this out for yourself in terms of the, the display. So we're going to look at the amount of carbons first. So one, two, three, four, five carbons there. Five, as I said, was pent. And because it's an alkane, then the end of this will be an ane to signify that. So in terms of when you look at this name, what it should be saying to you is there are five carbons and the alkane is more or less a lack of a functional group. So an alkane there, nothing else is stuck onto it. So that's that compound. Now onto the alkene. Look again for the longest carbon chain because if there are branches coming off it, so if you, well, if you'll not be old enough really, snakes on the original Nokia, there are some updated versions of it where it can wind around the page. Make sure to run your pen and actually try and find the longest carbon chain. It's not always the one that just goes straight across. It could be across and then right the way down the page. In other words, look for the longest. So here I've kept it nice and simple again. One, two, three, four, five. So five carbons. So pent. Now you need to count from this side which gives the double bond the lowest number. So we've got a choice. One, two, because obviously it starts at the second carbon. Or one, two, three, because it would start there then. So obviously two is less than three. So pent. 2 and then because it's an alkene it ends with ene. Now there is another bit to go with the alkenes as well because you'll hear about the EZ isomerism. So what that means is you can see here that one of the carbon groups, so the carbon there is sticking up, carbon here is down. Around here we have hydrogens. So in terms of the EZ isomerism and actually naming it what you look for is the highest atomic number attached around that double bond. So carbon beta hydrogen here, so the highest is facing up. Carbon beta hydrogen there, so the highest is down. So these are on opposite sides. So in terms for that, you would name it the Z isomer. Sorry, the E isomer. Um, cannot remember the German word. Entigagen in Zusammen. Anyway, speaks German, apologies there. Um, easiest way to remember it, Z is the same, E different. Under the hollow alkanes, um, quite similar to naming the alkanes. So how many carbons in the longest chain? One, two, three. Now the hollow alkanes are a little bit weird in that normally when you're adding a functional group, it's the end bit you change, as you can see with the E in there. The halogens don't, they get put on at the start. So, chloral. 
So in terms of your halogens, you're gonna have fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iono. So kind of sound like the hobbits from Lord of the Rings. We need to actually say where the halogen is stuck. So you count from the side to give it the lowest number. So one, two, or one, two, makes no difference. Two, chloro, and then we finish it off with the A in there. So we are still keeping the actual alkane chain, just with halogen stuck on it. And down here with the aldehydes. Again, longest chain. We'll always be looking for that for your parent. So one, two, three, four. Now the aldehydes as well, when you're actually changing the end of it, you're going to have AN there first. What the AN represents is that all of the carbons along here are single bonded to each other. In other words, it's sort of a derivative of the alkane. It's telling you you do not have any carbon-carbon double bonds. We change the E on the end to signify that it is no longer just a plain alkane. We change that to an al, so butanal. One, two, three, four, and it's telling me the ending is an aldehyde. I do not need to put a number for the aldehyde because aldehydes are always stuck on the end. So in other words, it would always have the number one in terms of just a simple aldehyde. You will not be doing mixes where you've got the carboxylics with the aldehydes in with it. In other words, where the priorities of the functional group start messing things up a bit. So simple aldehyde will always just finish air like that. So butanal, propanal, pentanal, things like that. And the ketones, again, longest chain, one, two, three, four, five. And again, carbons all single bonded to each other. So pent an, but we're going to change the E on the end to signify that it's no longer just a plain alkane chain. It's going to become a ketone, so it ends on. Now with the ketones, this carbon double bond oxygen can be anywhere in the middle of a chain. So it will not be on the end because that will be an aldehyde. It will be in the middle. So there is a choice really. It could have been on the second carbon here or the third as in our case. This side would just be classed as the second again because you always count from the side to give it the lowest number. So one, two or one, two if it was stuck on either of those. So this one's stuck on the third. So we need to say that. So what that name says to me, again, when you get the hang of reading it, it says five carbons, they're all single bonded to each other, but on the third carbon, there is a ketone functional group. Onto the alcohols. So alcohols, how many carbons in your chain? Two there. One, two. Do not count this here. That is carbon there. It is joined onto the oxygen here. So F. Carbons single bonded to each other, ethan, and because we are changing the alkane functional group to an alcohol now, we are going to replace the E there with an ol. So ethanol, so most people is poison of choice. If you wanted to be very strict then, yes you could say ethan one ol. I mean there is only one choice in this case because we are counting from the side to give the ol the lowest number. So if the OH was stuck on there, carbon one, if it was stuck on here, carbon one. But with the longer chains, obviously say the pens, you could have pentan one all, pentan two all, pentan three all. So a good habit really. That, and then you get used to saying where the alcohol is actually stuck. So those are some simple whip throughs of them. So now I'm gonna do one or two more complex of the alkanes, since for chem one, that's the one you'll probably see the majority of, especially when you're doing the structural isomerism. Okay, um, I've actually, 
Yeah, I've, I've broken the rules slightly for Chem 1. Normally it'll be limited to six carbons, but you can do this, you can do them all. So again, look for the longest chain. Remember what I said, you do not always have to go across. One, two, three, four. Does that look to be the longest? No. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's longer, but is it the longest? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's our longest, the hex. Now it's an alkane, as you can see there is no other functional group to put on it, so I'll finish with a name. So, I'll take the bit we've actually looked at, but as you can see, there is some branches coming off here which we haven't taken into account yet. So we need to say where they are actually stuck. So we count from the side to give them the lowest number doesn't really matter with this that's symmetrical one two three four so three and four or one two three four so three and four again but you count from the side which would give them the lowest combined number and what we need to say now is since I'm going to say position three there is a branch I need to look at how long that branch actually is so it's one carbon. One carbon as a branch isn't called methane, it's called methyl. So the methyl tells me it's a branch. And if we look at position four, that's also one carbon. So there's a little bit of time saving what you can do here. Right, it's getting a bit cramped there. But three, four, dimethyl. So what that tells me is at position 3 and position 4 there is a methyl. The di is telling me there is two methyls, one at 3, one at 4. So in terms of again just being able to read it, positions 3 and 4 there is one methyl on them because the two there, so one on that, one on that. Hex, six carbons in my longest chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, and in because it is an alkane. So you can do similar with things like the, the alcohols, the chloros. So if I change this by making it BR just to bring something in. So in terms of this, we're going to be counting from the side to give them the lowest number. So 1 and 2 is better than going 1, 2, 3. In terms of naming it, One bromo, two chloro, propane. Now, there's a little thing I want to introduce here just to show you an irregularity which sometimes confuses people. In terms of the branches, so I've just flipped the chlorine and the bromine there. In terms of naming that, some people would go. 1 chloro, 2 bromo, propane for naming it. That's actually incorrect. When it comes to adding the branches on, the, the prefixes, you must name it alphabetically. So the numbers do not matter. It's alphabetically. So in terms of naming this, it's actually called 2 bromo, 1 chloro, propane. Because obviously B before C in the alphabet. The numbers still act as their purpose. It still tells me at position 2 there is a bromine. At position 1 there is a chlorine. The carbon um, longest chain 3. The pro 1, 2, 3. And in A because it's still the main alkane branch. It would be exactly the same as if I had different lengths of carbon chain across here as well on the alkane. In terms of you would have your ethyl before the methyls, even if the methyl had a lower number. Um, so that's pretty much all the naming for Chem 1 and Chem 2. If you can do these, you should be pretty competent with most of them.